everyone, welcome to my podcast, Sex, Sex Blood, Blood and, and Rock and, and Roll. Roll. This is episode one. I'm your host, Evelina Zamore. It's so fabulous to see you. For those of you that haven't previously followed me before, I am a mother, a lover. I am an artist, a designer, a songwriter, a woman of many talents. I'm a goddess. I am a hot chocolate enthusiast seeking like-minded individuals. <laughs> it sounds like I'm filling out a dating profile, doesn't it? That's something that we're going to talk about. So let's actually talk about what what I would like to speak to you about in this podcast. I want to cover music. Obviously, it's a huge part, an intrinsically important part of who I am. Um, not only do I like to listen to music, you know, it's quite nice. I, I'm pretty good at making it as well. Um, so I want to share what I'm doing in regards to my songwriting with you. Let's talk about sex. Are you having it? <laughs> Woo, tell me if you are. Comment down below. We'll speak about parenting, what's going on in the world, the, the situation uh, with the pandemic that we find ourselves in at the moment. Um, general things that are happening in my life, my business, and a big topic will be spirituality. Over the last year and a half, I found myself becoming very connected um, with the idea that I am greater than what I'm currently being. And that took me down at first a very dark path. Um, I went through what I now know as the dark night of the soul. And I literally, I was just thrown into darkness and chaos. And it was, um, at the time it seemed like it would never end. And it was, uh, it was very transformative. It was life-changing. It was hard, it was difficult at times. Um, like I said, I never, at some at some points I didn't think that I would actually, you know, come out of it, um, but I did. <laughs> and I'm fairly certain that that will translate um, to whoever's watching this today. So that journey definitely saw me come out of the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, as an entirely different person. I'm not who I was a year and a half ago, and um, a lot has happened in that time. And it has definitely taken me on this path of spirituality, and I'm, I'm really connecting with that now. And I will be talking about a lot of the, the spiritual teachers that I'm now um, learning from, be it just on YouTube or ebooks or people that I've met in person at communities that I'm now part of. So I may just um, share advice that I've gotten. I'm really into Teal Swan. I love Russell Brand's um, podcast that he's got on YouTube. Eckhart Tolle, um, Joe Dispenza, anything on advancing or improving one's consciousness is where I'm at at the moment. And I'm really excited to share what I've learned with you. And I feel I'm finally at the point where I, I've understood it and experienced it enough myself that I can share it with you. That in itself is a really exciting part of my transformation. Okay, so let's start with a life update. Life's been pretty fucking hard recently. I mean, it's crazy times that we're living in right now. You know, the pandemic is literally um, affecting every single person. For those of you that don't know, I live in Tamworth, which is in the state of New South Wales within Australia. And we are now in lockdown and have been for two weeks. Sydney, which is six hours away, has been in lockdown for, I think it's eight or nine weeks now. You know, there's been a lot of obstacles to overcome. I'm really missing the social interaction with other humans. And I, I understand why the restrictions are there, but um, that has definitely been a challenge. Over the last year and a half, I've really discovered how much of a social creature I am and I crave um, interactions daily. So yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with that in my own way. I'm definitely keeping up my daily practice of meditation and um, reading and expanding my consciousness and um, who I am as a person and making sure that I'm trying to align myself with my life goals and not let the pandemic own me, um, so to speak. I, I don't like giving away my power to anything, even though it's been tough and challenging, you know, I'm, I'm healthy and God bless technology, you know, that we're able to video call people has been really handy in these um, dire times. Okay, so enough about COVID. Let's talk about what's been happening business-wise. So a few weeks ago now, when I first filmed the trial for this podcast, my order of 500 handbags had just arrived. It was about freaking time, honestly. It took a good nine months for them to arrive through no fault of my own. A little bit was the waiting um, to get the pre-orders from everyone that was kind enough to, to pre-order from my website and support um, Black Friday and I. Um, but a big part of it was just that the order was kind of initiated when COVID just like ran rampant through the entire fucking planet. And businesses shut down and obviously manufacturing in Hong Kong was like completely halted for many months. Products and little elements that normally were available weren't available. So it was it was a big problem um, and I'm sure it was experienced not just for me but for many manufacturers. Um, so I'm really appreciative to all of my customers that waited literally nine months to almost a year for the handbags. So they have all been sent out now. 
So this is the bag that we were waiting on. This is the Black Friday version two handbag. It is available in three colors now. So the interior color in this one is purple. It's also available in black and red. So they are available on my website now. It's a little inside shot of the purple interior. I'm just loving that purple. And yes, there's stuff in the handbag because that is my daily handbag. I fucking love it. So that arrived as well as the men's Black Friday wallet and the ladies Black Friday wallet, which also come in different colors. So head on over to my website if you haven't already to check them out. They are all in stock. Another thing that arrived, which I'm super excited about, was my Frankenstein handbag and wallet. So it's my first matching set that I've been able to have manufactured without the need for pre-orders, which is something I'm gonna talk about in a minute in my little segment on advice for people starting businesses. It was really lovely to be able to just have that made without um, the pre-ordering system. It's taken me a few years to get my business to the point where I've had funds there to be able to do that. It's really lovely for me to see any of my customers uh, share photos with me via Instagram or Facebook or whatever fucking platform it is, but I absolutely adore seeing those. So thank you if you've sent one in. If you have some of my products and you haven't sent me a photo, please do just DM me on Instagram and I'd love to be able to post it in, um, in my stories. Another product that launched very recently without the need to pre-order, which I'm super excited about, was my Christiana one and only compact mirror. Now I'm super excited about this design because it hasn't been done before. I'm literally the first one in the world to be able um, to do this shape. So it's got the little protector on it there. I'm just gonna rip that off. Oh, let's do some ASMR, ready? Microphone above me. Oh. Yes, oh, that was satisfying. Okay, so here's the mirror. I'm just gonna wait for that to focus. So it's a fully glass mirror. I know I've had some problems in the past um, with the Death Candy Coffin mirror. In batch one, we used Perspex mirror and it just, it, it wasn't good enough. So I said it has to be glass this time, but these are selling like hotcakes and this is the patent version. So that's shiny. And this is the matte version. So you can see the difference very clearly there on the back. It's got inspired by Christiana one and only go and check her out. If you don't know who she is, she's a fucking babe. Beauty is often hidden in the darkness. So that's a quote that she chose that resonated with her and me. I love how sexy yet simple and elegant this is. They are available in three colors. Um, there's actually six options. So you've got the red, black and white in the patent and the red, black and white in the matte versions. They're only 34.95. So head on over to my website and um yeah go and grab yourself one of those and if you do purchase one please send me a photo i'd love to see it so let's talk about a little life update on my music um for those of you that don't know i am a very prolific songwriter. Um, over the last year, I wrote 75 songs and it was getting to the point <laughs> where I hadn't released any. I'm so busy um, and stuck almost in this cycle of writing because I'm experiencing life so much now, which is part of my, my kind of awakening and my journey. Every interaction I have is almost causing me to sit at the piano, which is just beside me, and um, express that in, in the form of music. I love being in that flow state where I'm literally just connected my heart open like I, I get this tingle it almost feels like um like a an entire body orgasm and I don't know if you've heard about those or an energetic orgasm when I'm in that state and I'm feeling the music it's <laughs> it's addictive it's like my little dopamine hit and I definitely get that from songwriting which I love I love that I've honed something to the point where I can do it without thinking and I'm doing it more from a state of feeling now and I love that that has become a form of meditation for me so yeah, 75 songs. It got to the point where I had to um, contact a producer and we're now in pre-production, which is really exciting, of um, what will become my debut album. So yay, <laughs> put in the applause time. and the about fucking time. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was really lovely to go through and have like an industry professional go through my music and um, critique it and help me pick out what my strongest um, work was within you know my portfolio of um, songs that I'd written. Um, I definitely wasn't able to do it because each time I birth a new song into the world, it's my favorite, it's like a child. And um, I needed that, that, I guess, emotional separation from what I was creating. So that's been lovely. And we've got about 20, maybe to 25 of the 75 songs that I've written as ones that we really need to focus on. Even that, like, yeah, it's significantly reduced, but I'm like, fuck, it's still too many. So I had um, my first video call, of course, 
again, New South Wales is in lockdown. Unfortunately, I couldn't go and do this face to face, which, um, yeah, it was unfortunate, but the time will come where, you know, we, we get that back, <laughs> the ability to see people in person. So we did it via, I think it's Zoom. Yeah, I'm used to Skype. <laughs> I'm used to ICQ though. Uh-oh, <laughs> it was old enough to remember that sound. Anyway, we worked on one of my, let's say, standout songs, which is called Gone Away. We worked just simply on the arrangement and gosh, um, the improvements were significant. It was so beautiful to see a song that I already loved so much with every fiber of my being. I'm like, yes, I, like, I know what I'm doing is of a certain caliber. But then to have another creative person just work simply on the arrangement and make it like hit home and punch. It was striking. It was, yeah, it was a really significant moment in my life. I've never experienced that before. And I'm really into experiencing new things <laughs> um, as we all should be. I mean, what have you done? Well, when was the last time that you did um, something for the first time? Honestly, answer that. If, if you're not, you really need to take a step back and analyze why that is. Um, life is beautiful and it's full of uh, new opportunities to experience newness in every moment. Something I want to speak about later on in the podcast, which is more around the spirituality section, is segment intending. And that has definitely helped me move from moment to moment with a sense of newness rather than carrying, you know, hoarding fear or doubt or, um, you know, anger from something that happened fucking possibly days or weeks ago into my future. So I'm like, okay, this happened and now I'm moving on to the next section. So if you haven't ever heard of that, um, look into it. Uh, it's a really good concept and it's definitely helped me um, become more present and aware and in the moment with you. In this moment, there is nothing else that I'm thinking about other than communicating with you, whoever you are, wherever you are. And um, I hope that that connectedness is um, apparent whilst you're watching me today. So moving on to a song now, uh, within this podcast, I'm going to share with you little snippets of things that I might have written this very day of filming the podcast or a few weeks or months ago, or it could simply just be a cover. I'm not really too sure because th this is episode one of how I'm going to go with the copyright um, issues of doing covers within the podcast, but fuck it, we're going to try it today. So I'm going to head on over to my piano here and sing Lana Del Rey's White Mustang, which is one of my favorite songs of hers. There's literally so many of her songs that I absolutely adore. It was hard um, to pick which one I was going to do for you today, but this one is one of my favorites. I think you'll like it. Packing all my things for the summer Dying in my bed It's a bummer cause I didn't call and I got your number but I liked you a lot Slipping on my dress and some filters Everybody said you were a killer But I couldn't stop the way I was feeling the day Your record dropped The day I saw your white Mustang Your white Mustang The day I saw your white Yeah. 
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that cover. And while we're on the topic of music and singing, I wanted to give a little bit of advice for any singers that may be out there, whether you're beginning or you've been singing for a little while. I feel like this advice, um, no matter what point of your career, or even if you're just doing it as a hobby, whatever point you're at, I think I can give you some tips that would be really helpful. So for those of you that don't know, I actually ran a music school for almost a decade, a private music school in Sydney. Um, we had like 150 um, private students weekly and we taught uh, singing, violin, guitar, uh, piano. Now I also teach ukulele. I don't do too much teaching um, these days because my business is going really well and I have two boys. So being a, a single mum now um, takes up a lot of my time and I don't do anything other than parent my boys when they're with me. When they're with their father, that's when I focus on my business, myself and my music. But before we moved up to Tamworth, I was working four days a week, um, sometimes doing 10 hours a day teaching. It was a lot of talking. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I do really miss the connectedness and the interactions that I had with my students. A lot of them I still speak to now, even though I haven't taught them in seven years. Um, and I've made lifelong bonds with uh, their parents. It's really a beautiful way to meet new people. And I genuinely miss doing that as a full-time job. So getting to my advice, it is to not take it too seriously. Now, I get in the beginning you have to, but there's a fine line and I definitely cross that <laughs> fucking well and truly. Like the line was here and I was like, woo, I'm way over here. The need to warm up is, depends who you ask. If you ask me right now, I'm gonna say it's not terribly necessary. I went on this crazy, uh, obsessive almost um, path in regards to singing and I tried to make my voice um, something it wasn't. I took people that I was influenced by too seriously and tried to step into their shoes. So at this time, this might've been say Floor Jansen from Nightwish who has an incredible <laughs> range way beyond mine or just Kelly Clarkson or uh, Mariah Carey, not necessarily singers from genres that I would release music myself in, but as a singing teacher, I was uh, exposed to a lot of genres that I wouldn't normally listen to. And it definitely gave me a greater appreciation for music. So when people ask, oh, what do you listen to? I'm almost like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> listen to everything, um, be it jazz to classical, to rock and roll, to metal. The only thing I don't find I'm, I, I can't listen to is yeah, like death metal, where there's no melodicness to the, the vocal melodies. I really appreciate melody and sing along melodies and a contemporary of sorts uh, structure to, as in like verse, chorus, uh, verse, chorus, bridge. Yeah, I, I like that. And I'm very happy to, to sit within that. I don't see it as a limitation. It's, it's more a preference and I'm completely fine with that. So I found myself in this tricky place of um, always comparing and comparison is the death of authenticity. Let's say that again. Comparison is the death of authenticity. I was so busy trying to be like someone else, you know, when I would sing a cover, I would say, oh, fuck, Rihanna sings like Diamond so much better than I do. Or, you know, Mariah Carey sings my all. Oh, of course, like, fuck. Oh. We, we shouldn't do that. Like we should be going into the song um, and singing it because we love it or it puts like our heart in, you know, an open place and it connects us to something greater than ourselves. To me now, singing is all about feeling. So what I want to say to you is don't take it too seriously. Don't over warm up and also embrace your limitations. So for me, I don't have a crazy upper range um, and that's definitely something I was trying to do when I went down this path of becoming something I wasn't. I was trying to increase my range and um, I did a lot of classical training. I did a lot of pop training and it was all about taking away uh, the character that my voice had. And I, I see that very clearly now. Like it was very, how do I explain it? It wasn't in the moment. It wasn't connected. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't authentically me. I was trying to be someone else. So when you sing someone else's song, don't try to be them. That's the main um, gist of what I'm trying to say. Sing it your way, you know? I guess at the same time, I will contradict myself a little bit here in saying that the only way that you can truly find yourself is through copying or impersonating momentarily 
all of your influences because it will come out at some point through your life experience and your perspective differently through your authenticity and then will make something greater than the sum of its parts or the sum of like everyone that you've been listening to so that um over the last year and a half has in a most beautiful way happened to me it's like i took so much in through being a singing teacher and then when i literally like vomited that back out and abandoned my training but still had that training in the in the background not at the forefront front anymore of how I was singing and sung more from a place of feeling like I need to feel it now it's not about how high the fucking note is I don't care what the note is I don't care what the range is I embrace all of the little quirks that I thought were too weird for um my vocals previously like my my yodels vocal fry I'm quite dramatic in how I sing there's a Say one that springs to mind is like Taylor Momsen. Um, she's got a overly rock and roll bluesy kind of vibe about her. And I fucking love that. I also connect greatly to like Lana Del Rey in the way that she um, she sings almost without time. There's this, this sense of um, freedom within the way that she sings. And I love that as well. And now I'm at a point where I can appreciate the little snippets of each singer and then almost redesign how I sing. Um, but once I stopped trying to copy other people and I just embraced what I had, I literally turned my weaknesses into my power. And that would be my advice to you. Just, yeah, sing a lot of covers. That'll definitely help you develop your own style, but don't copy. Um, you know, if you've got this little thing that you do, do it more, embrace it, see where you can take it. A lot of the times I felt more like a life coach um, than a singing teacher because a lot of people would come to me of all ages as well. Like I taught kids um, as young as five and six up to like 86 year olds. So it was quite beautiful, but it would be more getting them to overcome the fear of singing. And usually it's the fear of themselves. Um, you've heard the term, I'm sure that we are our own worst critic. And with singing, it's very personal. You know, when I sit at the piano, if I fuck it up, I'm like, ah, whatever, it's a piano's fault or the guitar, you know, you don't take it so personally, but with singing, you are the instrument. So there is a need to separate oneself and be aware of that as well, not take it personally. I definitely went down that rabbit hole of feeling like a inadequate and bad person because I couldn't sing like these other people. And once I stopped that comparison, I was really able to embrace and sing how my body was meant to sing. And that's what you need to be looking for. Um, to to find it enjoyable. I feel like I need to like <laughs> introduce each new segment with a little vape. It just looks cool, doesn't it? Mm. All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on to spirituality. Where do I start with this? So this could be tarot cards it could be meditation it could be current ebooks that i'm reading um energy be it sexual or creative energy or how the two are intertwined and um that is something that i'm going to speak about a lot um i've had first-hand experience in how that is just fucking totally catapulted my life into a completely different level of consciousness now that i'm aware that that is happening it's really drawn a lot of power back to myself which is what i'm about as well I might speak about being empathic or um, work that you can do with your inner child or your shadow side or mention a lot of philosophers that I've studied over the last year and a half. And again, my journey is quite new. So I'm always um, looking forward to hearing what you guys or where you are in your path as well. So comment down below if there is anything that you'd like to hear me speak about or that you think I should read. Definitely, if anything resonates with you, comment below and I will try to include that in the next um, podcast. So what I want to speak about now is the the moment that I realized that I was a highly empathic creature and it was quite significant because I, and I'm sure a lot of you have had this, like this moment, this epiphany where you're like, oh fuck, that's what's going on. <laughs> where I didn't realize like my whole life, I was feeling other people's energy, feeling other people's shit. And sometimes it's good, but it's unfortunately usually bad because if you're interacting with someone where they're not aware of their own space and their own energy or consciousness, they are projecting that onto you. Now, mirroring can happen between two people. And if they're both unconscious, it's really confusing because neither of you are kind of aware that it's going on and it can really affect your, your psyche and your emotional state. So when I became more aware of that, I definitely limited and reduced the type of people that I was um, coming in contact with. I was very consciously saying to myself, how does this person make me feel? And if I wasn't left 
in a positive state after seeing this person, I would definitely have to do some analyzing in regards to was it me bringing something to the party or was it the other person? Let's uh, vape together so I can stop momentarily and gather my thoughts. Let's do it together, ready? It's so nice. So mirroring and transference are two concepts that I've um, recently become, I would say, infatuated with. I like to know that um, the people that I'm hanging out with are going to make me feel safe and welcome and heard and loved. And it's really obvious to me um, through my understanding of congruency signals when that doesn't happen. And it forced me to reevaluate a lot of the people that I was hanging out with. And if um, it was valuable to me to, to continue a lot of these um, friendships or relationships. Now this can be tricky if you're in a relationship or friendship or you know it could be your boss could be anyone but if you're coming in contact with someone that is not conscious and is uh, transferring this shit onto you and you're not aware that it's happening to you or if you are it's just it's a total mind fuck and i want to share a little experiment it's an ethical experiment that i did with someone just to show you how i dealt with someone that i was having issues with on an ongoing basis so there's someone in my life that constantly makes me feel quite diminished. I became very aware of it and I was looking at ways to try to help resolve this and I wanted to see what I could do to change the dynamic of this relationship because it was really getting me down. Or let's say I had to prepare my psyche and soul to see this person because I knew the damage that it would do, which when you put it like that is quite sad. But again, if, if you're having this kind of issue with like a, it could be your significant other, it could be your husband, it could be um, your best friend or a boss, it could be someone that you, you can't avoid. How do you tackle addressing that? And that's what I want to speak about. So the person that I'm speaking about, they're a dentist, so I can't mention their name. Um, I can't show you their face. <laughs> Hopefully that's a, a universal joke. Otherwise it will make zero fucking sense. But anyway, everything that I said to this person was just completely shot down. It was uh, met with negativity and uh, disdain and just um, bitterness. And it, it wouldn't matter what I said. I could have said, hey, I'm a fucking unicorn. And it would just like, obviously, well, I am a fucking unicorn. Don't tell me I'm not. <laughs> but even if it was realistic statements, there was always just this air of negativity to it. And it was really getting me down. So I decided to do, again, an ethical experiment. What I did was I purposely said the opposite of what I wanted to say to this person. And not just once. I did this for an entire week. Um, so I really went against my... Uh, let's say my congruency signals. I wasn't my true self with this person, but I did it consciously because I wanted to see if it was me. Was it my personality that was conflicting with this person or was it them? Was it something that they had to deal with? And through saying the polar opposite of what I wanted to say, I was shown um, very quickly that it wasn't me. The findings of the little experiment over the week were it didn't matter what I said to this person, whether it was my authentic truth or um, it was completely false, it was shot down in exactly the same manner each time. And that, again, epiphany comes to mind um, in, in trying to, to word that. <sighs> was very overwhelming, it was very significant, and it was also quite sad because it, it, it made me realize that there was no pleasing this person and that's where they are at as a person. So after that experiment, I took a little bit of space from this person and I really had to digest the findings, which were, it didn't matter what I said, it, it would never be good enough in the eyes of this person. I really had to disconnect myself and say, okay, well, th that's not a reflection of me. That's not me not being good enough. That's on them. And, and also if they're doing that to me, they're probably quite unconsciously doing it to everyone else in, in their circle as well. So once I was able to confirm that it wasn't what I was specifically saying and that it was probably a, a much greater problem than being just directed at me, and I separated myself, I, I was met with very different emotions towards this person. And the, the ones that spring to mind was sadness, but um, empathy and compassion. Um, so now when this person is on automatic pilot to me, I'm, I'm able to communicate with them from a disconnected emotional state, if that makes sense, and understand that they, th this is just the programming that they are in. And it also saddens me that they're not 
on any kind of path of self-improvement and like who the fuck am I to say hey I think you should read this ebook on like you know um, dealing with your inner child I'm also aware of that I'm not one of those people that are going to push my views or my journey onto someone else so in wanting to love this person completely and knowing that they had to be and were going to be a part of my life I had to come to the fact that we weren't going to see eye to eye and mainly look after myself and that separation that I was able to do and look at them through different eyes, through a, a veil of compassion and sympathy um, really did help uh, my relationship. It, it improved significantly with this person. I still like, I'm not fucking God. Um, I still have my moments where this person just drives me fucking up the wall, but I'm able to separate and um quite quickly disconnect from that and realize that it's not me. So comment down below, have you had someone in your life um, that just gets on your fucking nerves or gets under your tits? I don't know if that's like a, <laughs> an Australian colloquialism, but yeah, let me know. Who is it? Was it your lover? Was it your brother? Was it your mother? Was it a friend? Was it your boss? And let me know if what I've shared with you um, might actually help or improve your relationship. And if it does, that's, uh, that's quite an honor for me to, to be able to share that story with you. I don't think I'm going to bother with transitions. I'm just going to vape and you will know as a physical cue that um, we're onto something else now. <laughs> I mean, if you're listening to this on um, Audible or somewhere else um, where it's just, you know, audio, that, that might be a little confusing. We'll work it out. Okay, so still on um, the, the segment of uh, spirituality, I guess, but now we're going to move on to Abraham Hicks. If you haven't heard, the teaching of Abraham is all about um, positivity and its power and the law of attraction through Abraham Hicks. I also came across Aaron Doherty. My interest in linear time and um, space time, time space through Joe Dispenza um, has just skyrocketed and really kind of freaking me out. The idea of perceptions and different dimensions within your own reality and uh, controlling your own reality really interests me. So if this interests you at all, again, look up Abraham Hicks. I remember driving to Newcastle which is like three and a half hours away from Tamworth. And I just put on a playlist and listened to like nonstop Abraham Hicks. And I'm just like, fucking yes, <laughs> this makes so much sense. So it's, uh, it's really lovely and it can really change your energy quite quickly once you attune to what she's saying and um, you're open to it. So yeah, if this resonates with you at all, go and check out her work. It's really quite marvelous. Okay, it is most definitely time for a little music. So I'm going to go head over to my piano again and sing you a little something that I've been working on. It's incomplete, but I'm just going to share it with you because I'm completely in love with it at the moment. So enjoy. The scent that lingered in the air back in October blue Deeper than a rose in blue I gave myself to you don't leave me bleeding in the summer rain as light extracts the tears of yesterday are falling i'm bleeding in the summer rain crying cause you took your love away my baby Thank you so much for listening to the first part of Sex, Blood and Rock and Roll. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this. Please comment, share, like. Uh, yeah, let's get this going. I really look forward to building a community with you and I will see you in part two.